Hey, it's Joe Lines from the Automator. And the other day I was on with Isaias and we were talking to Maestrieth about our course on classes that we're working on for Auto Hotkey, the Intro Classes course. And we kind of fell into talking about version two of Auto Hotkey. And so I have a lot of videos talking about version two. So I wanted to give you this link here if you want. But the following is just Isaias talking to Maestrieth about some of the differences in version two and what you can do. So it's a fun and interesting conversation. Just remember it was not planned. So Isaias was just kind of talking through stuff. And so we played around a bit and had to work on some stuff. If you're learning version two, it's it's a great intro for some of the, the bigger stuff, especially if you're already a programmer, right? That's where Maestrieth, you can tell he's He's so funny because his knowledge of objects are incredible, but he doesn't come from a programming background. So he's asking questions like, oh, that's why they call it this thing. Or, oh, yeah, that's how we implement it here. He's also learning in C Sharp, I think. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. I'm going to record. We might, we might want to reach for this. <laughs> an example. And it's such yeah. Amazing. I know it's, we've talked about it several yeah. times, right? I still don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you don't get it. Why you should use it. No, it's just, it's, it's, man, it's. <laughs> No, but in general, um, the good thing about version two is that it actually has a way for you to figure out what type of variable you have, right? And you do not have to cast or specify what type of variable you're storing, but the script with the help of a function type will determine that. And for example, the first time I did it, if I put a three in there, it would automatically infer that that's an integer. If it is like this, it would be a float. If it is quotation marks around it, if it has it, it would be a string. And this is the part that is kind of like interesting and a little bit confusing about. Um, <clears throat> you have here an object, which is defined as an object. This one is defined as an array, and this one is defined as a map. And then the question is, well, what's the difference? Basically, these three things, they all come from the same type of object, but they have, they behave differently, which is the, the key idea behind it. So an object, think about um, a real life example of an object. Let's get this thing. Well, it has properties, which is the size, the color, um, you know, if it is hard or soft, those are the properties. And it has actions, what it can do. This thing cannot do anything unless it's plugged. But those are the methods. So an object can have either properties or methods. A map is not an object. A map is something for you to define key value pairs like a um, as a, a dictionary. Now, what is the difference in terms of programming when you talk about that? Well, an object, you can have properties, color equals red, you know, um, let's see, uh, size, uh, you know, big, whatever. So this is my object. And the key difference is when you're using the for loop. The for loop, allows you to iterate between key value pairs. And actually you have done that very often when you say key value in object. Have you done that, right? Oh yeah. But those are not keys. Those are properties. By the way, you, I think, I, I will show you. So right now, output debug key, right? So. Um, if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error right there. It should tell me that the value is not enumerable. The reason for this is because that is not a value. That is a property. And the property itself, but for you to be able to enumerate them, you would have to use the own props. Like this thing here, the own props function from that type of object enumerates the properties for you to be able to see them. That's where it would actually go ahead and do that. With a map, it's not like that. For a map, you do have key value pairs. And I would say my, uh, so my color equals red. People don't like how this one is actually defined. 
But I don't like it either. That's okay. That's part of the process. And then we have size my size. And then it would be, I don't know, big. But where is the difference? I'll show you something interesting about this. So new map, this is map object, right? This one, I do not have to look through their properties, right? Because those are not properties. Those are keys. Right. So in this case, this should work without issues. And I could have the value as well here. So I could have my key value. They, they work as you, you might think. But there's something interesting about them. You can have the map object beside the, the, um, the key value pairs that we're talking about. They can have properties as well. So now I can have something like this. And I could have also size small. So now, not only I have key value pairs in the map, I also have properties about that map, which I could access normally as, as if I would, you know, so I will show you what happens here. Map object dot color, right? And let's do this here. Let me put this color and size as well. Notice I have the same key value pairs as properties, but they are different and they are accessed differently. So you will see this. I could have Mac, uh, Mac object color and size, color and size. They have the same name, but they're different. The way how you access them are different. And the way in that, what it does is that it brings for the color red and blue and size big and small. And, and I'm referring to the same object, but you cannot do that with this type of objects because this one, for that one, you cannot set a key like this, like object, like color equals blue. So Do if I try to work anymore, no, that doesn't work because again, they are not. Uh, so this one is blue and this one is small. Again, so here's, this one should give me an error. So the object has no property name item because it cannot put items in it. So here's the thing. Think about it this way. The objects that you know in version one, now they are called maps. And they do exactly as you think. They're maps because they can have properties. They can have keys. You can look through them the same as usual. The only difference is that now you just have to, how I do it is that I just define map. And now I just set whatever I want for it, like map color. And my, you know, I just do that. I just define them as, as I would. But they're no longer person sensitive, right? So that's a very important thing to remember. Oh yeah. They, they, so properties and keys in here, keys are, so the properties are case insensitive. So if I have the same property with different values like this, even if the case is different, they would always show like they, they actually, let me remove all this. So I defined it. I grab color here, put the blue here, and then I put the other C in capital letter and put another color. That works exactly as you might expect. The only one that you would see is the last value. It's not the same with a key value pair, and that's the reason why they're different. Because a map object, if I have color and the color is blue, right? 
and C with a big C, capital C, those are two different keys. Those are two different things. So now, if I do this, and I do this, they both have different values. Okay, so when I go ahead and do that, one of them says blue, the other one says red. Because in when you're talking about key value pairs, it is case sensitive unless you define it otherwise, because you can actually turn it off, like map dot object dot uh, case, I think it is, case sense is equals false or something like that, if I remember correctly. And in that case, then uh, let me see, a map must be empty. Oh, so I, sh I have. Oh, you got to do it on line 24. Just move it up. Oh, no. It froze. Um, I was just explaining that when you create a map, you can actually tell to turn off case sensitivity. And once you do that, like both objects, even if they're lowercase or uppercase, um, would return the same value. But again, be careful because these are not properties. Those are key value pairs. And that's the difference between them. And this object that you're um, kind of like um, accustomed to, what it happened now, and it is not the object itself. It's just the way how you define it when you do this inline objects. Um, they think of them as a lesser version of an object, of the objects that you know. The lesser version only has properties and methods. It doesn't have key value pairs. That's what happens. That's the only difference between them. So it you is can annoying. throw a method in there. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. How would you oh, define a method within? Oh, yeah, easy. So you just say, for example, uh, func, and then you would use the function to define my function. Now you have, now you just create your function here. Uh, message box true. Gonna say you don't even need braces anymore. What's going on? <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> that would be that would be weird, right? <laughs> no, but in general, yes. Um, you oh well, you don't need braces anymore if you don't want to, because you can create the anonymous functions in here now. So you really? can actually yes, you can do message box true like this if you want. So huh. yeah, I could just grab this whole thing, put it right in here. Don't put it any name, and it would just go ahead and call the function, however that is. I think you can put it like this or something. There is a way for you to the um, parameters, yeah, yeah. So you, there's a way for you to create like an inline function, which is what this is doing, or something like that. I don't remember. Oh God, it's you... getting more dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> this this is getting like crazy. But in general, you can actually just define a function. As uh, as you number would, you know, like this is a function definition. Um, let me see something. Uh, am I doing something? What am I doing? So, if you call to obj dot func, then it would it would it would actually call the function that you have defined down here. Interesting. Yeah. So it's okay. basically setting up a inline class. Yeah, yeah, you can totally, and uh, the. The reason why this is not working, let me double check what it is. And actually, no, this should be on version two. You just, uh, da, 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 da. nope, function objects. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I forgot how you call it. Like, um, That can be called like functions, but those are not the ones. I, I know that there is this thing uh, to bind. You bind the function into 
for bound object. Yeah, I there is a new there is a way for in in, in AutoHotKey version one as well. I don't use it that that often, but you can create a function reference, right? By reference. Right. So so that function reference, you stored it on the on the object itself. Mm. The only thing is that I don't know exactly where in the in the help file it is. I know that you can do it and I know that you can do it in line as well. So you can in one oh there it is. Look what I told you. You can do the you can do the fat arrow functions now, <laughs> which is what some people might hate that like crazy. I'm learning it and I'm loving it. Right. It's, it's, it is for things that you don't have to do. Like a, the problem is that people use it to create like a whole function, but it is usually for one liners, right? So if it is a one liner, you just do a, a, an anonymous function, which is how they are called. Right. Um, and basically, Creates a bound fox and recalls a method for of a given object. Yeah, that's object bind. There is I I remember there is something around. I just don't remember where it is uh, to show it to you. But in general, yes, you can inline um, create an object that has uh, methods in it. That's the point. So let me see something. Uh, this is the maps, and they have the properties and stuff. Right. I'm looking for the inline. And there are documentation, at least for that, for the out oh, here, the ad hoc. So you can do that and yeah. So oh, look at that. So you can define a method just by calling the method name. Function. That's right. So, so so basically, yeah. So basically, I don't even need this probably no. according to this. So yeah, that's like that. So I would say func just the name and it is already calling that function that's great that's object that func um and that should message box before right. yeah let me see too many parameters where my function i think it automatically passes at least all oh, right exactly so i have to at least make a i just do like a star yeah right, exactly. star yeah, yeah. See what That's it passes. Good. Yeah. Message box, the... The params, right? Yeah. Or I could just stop here and see it right here. It's an array, and it just passed uh, the object itself. So the first, the, the array, the first object, that, that is the this. So you could actually do something oh, okay, like, yeah, okay. the this thing. So you could Got say it. that is the, you know. Yeah, this dot color should give right, you... Right, so it would or, be like this. So you'd say this, that, color, right? So that should, in theory, just bring me the... No, you uh, got to do the square brackets. Hold on. Um, you got to do square brackets with the double quotes. I know, you can't, because that's, that's, not a, that's not a key. Like this, you say? Yeah. No, 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 no. If it is an object, you cannot do that at all, ever. Really? Yeah, no, 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 you can't. That is not an index. So you don't, you don't, in this case, you cannot do that. Okay, gotcha. Because, so you have to do this. The only thing right now is that this parameter. Oh, it's this dot one. So dot yeah, one. so yeah, exactly. So I need to pass that here because they're passed as, as several objects, right? Right. Yeah, so the first object would be that, yeah. And it's not this dot one will not work? I would say like this. This is what is going on. Oh, no, 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 no. I just... I just... No, but basically, that would be the way to define it so that this is that. Sure. And then any other parameter additional to it would be different, yeah. So right, I kind of like the veridic idea, it just... It has to be square one, square brackets one instead right. of this dot one and L. Right, because now you are getting a whole object, you know. Okay. Right. So this variable, which variable? You called it param instead of this. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. So, oh, you see, Joe, that's the reason why these warnings are good, because uh, right now it's not a lot of code, right? 
Mm-hmm. Because I got the warning just for one variable. Okay, but just imagine that I have a very big, large piece of, piece of code and I just change one of them to a different name, right? I just named this one to this. And now when I try to run it, if I don't get any warnings, I would have to look through all the code to see what happened or look through my recent changes. But in this case, it actually automatically told me that that was the issue. But in general, as you can tell, when you create a function like this, well, an object, if it is static like that, if it is an ad hoc object, it is limited. You cannot look through it. It doesn't have key values. It is just properties and methods. And methods, you can define them just by putting the name of the, me- the method right there. It's really easy. Um, now, if you want the full thing that we had previously, that would be a map. You just create a map. You Now you have the option of having properties, methods, everything, you know, the whole thing. But um, what you can happens do methods is, within a map as well? Um, I don't know. I now that you think now that you mention it, let's do it. So function. I haven't tried it because I would use a a, a map just for storing information. So I have never tried calling a function with it. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's see what happens. So red. That was the oh, first yeah, so, one. That's, there should be two message boxes. Hold on. Nope. There should be only... Okay, so yeah, this is this one. So let's delete that one. Now there, there should be, be one message only box. one, which there is blue, go. which is for the color. So basically, yeah, you can assign a function to a variable, oh, and now you can actually just go ahead and call. So, so the map is the full object, is how I would see it. The map is the full object. It has properties, key, value pairs, and methods. This ad hoc is just for you to quickly have something that has properties and methods, but it's not for looping. It's not for uh, key value pairs. That's not what it is for. Huh. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, it is. It, I, I really <laughs> would have <laughs> rather have it as it was prior to this. Um, and then just make the map and then just make the map or something uh, like, like, I would say like make this inline definition, the shorthand for a map. And if you need a limited object, then just create an object like this. Right. Because you can do that, right? So, now, can you open up curly braces after your map, after you instantiate the map and then just put the, uh... so go ahead and undo once. Oh, Oh. Or just, there uh-huh, we go. So. Now go to the end of the map, curly braces, and put in some uh, oh, key no, value you pairs can't. or whatever. No, no, you can't. That would be a syntax error right there. Even though that's a, well, huh, that is a very interesting suggestion, even though I don't know if he's going to take it. That's because... how C Sharp and just about every other language works. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Because they, they, they would say like, oh, that's a function definition. But now you see that I'm getting like syntax errors right here. And I would assume that that is going to bring me a syntax error. There we go. Unexpected. Unexpected, So that is interesting. I would, I will, I will go to the forum and suggest that. Um, But I would have rather have it in a way that this is shorthand for a map. And if you need a uh, downgraded, downgraded object, then make it, you know, that's your downgraded object, deal with it. You know, that's what how I would prefer it. But right. somehow he understands that that's not, nah, that's not how it works. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> well, it's his, he's, he's the one maintaining it. I cannot complain now. He's the one doing the, 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 the work. So right. I, I, can just, I can just decide whether to use it or not. <laughs> oh, uh, back to your SQLite um, uh-huh. wrapper you're making bar come value like this and that wraps uh for example if you have an object like this uh-huh. you wrap it into this kind of thing and the come value goes ahead and um uh puts it in a safe 
way to pass it into a DLL call. Nice. Right. So now you do this uh, variable type, the value. So that was the value would be the object. The variable type would be VTX. I don't know how uh, VT1. I, I don't know if you have those type of objects that are, you know, passed to com objects. And yeah, it would allow you to then now have a com object array or something that that now you can pass it into a DLL call as when they're expecting a structure. So it's really, really better. And you have the var references like var ref, which is when you have a normal variable, but with the ampersand on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is, it means the same, but it behaves differently because now that is a comvar reference. It is a var ref variable type. Right. So yeah, it, it is also a variable type. It's not just. Um, yeah, because before I think it just kind of. It, it just kind of yeah. It, it it just yeah. It defaulted into an integer, but it is not. So now that is also something that you can. So if you have var equals text, and you use type map object now. So if you do that, let me remove all this right here. Um, that should give you something. Hold on, let me see what is this. It'll never be a same. Yeah, yeah, hold on. That is because, hold on. It's <laughs> calling a lot of things that I do not want it to call. Yeah. All of this, ignore. Nope. All of this here. Just to be commented out. And uh, can I see? Yeah. So now the type for map object is not an integer. It is actually a var ref. So right. it is actually a var reference. That is a type of variable now. So whenever so a you just throw code, a pointer at it, yeah. Right. Uh, when whenever you um and actually you have buffers as well, so you can have like buffer. Now you just created a buffer and now you have text on it and the buffer also has a pointer. So you have like the map object the pointer. So that has the pointer to that buffer. Wow. Right. So there's a lot of things um, in version two that um, make it a little bit easier to work with other languages. So if you're using a script and using a lot of DLL calls and a lot of those kind of things, it makes it a little bit easier because now when the DLL call expects a buffer, you do not have to do this var set, var put, how we did before. You know, oh, this no var set capacity? Those kind of things. No, you don't have to do all that. You have a buffer now. You have oh, to set wow. the string of the buffer, right? It is a little bit cleaner. It's way cleaner, by the way. Huh. Yeah. Um, Base64 and... Uh, right. I'm guessing Base64 encoding is not native. Um, when you're not sure about what you mean. Well, like take a string and encode it into Base64. They still rely on the API. That's. It's I, think, I think it's, it's still relays, relays on. Okay. No, I don't think they still have that. You still have to do it manually. Uh, but for the buffer, you do have a byte count now that it automatically sets the, the size for that buffer. Okay. So now you do not have to do the, the, the thing. And it has two properties, the pointer and the size. Oh. So now you can. And that's basically what I do in one of my, um, on my calls, that if you're actually passing a buffer, it would take the size of that buffer if it needs that. It just passes the size and wow. um, those kind of things. It is a little bit cleaner. The code is better. That's, that's what I, the one thing that I can say. That's great. Yep.